Gotta love that from the gecko. There's no way you heat canteen with an op, right? What are you doing? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just watched your whole team die and the bomb is planted. I thought I had time. I thought I had time. Is it planted for me? No, it's not planted for you. Why would it be planted for you? Who the hell plants the bomb on Fracture and is like, yeah, I'm going to plant it open to gen. No, they'll die doing that, bro. What do you mean? Is it planted for me? Yeah, one sec. I'm going to plant out here exposed to gen and canteen. Bro, you have an op. You literally have an op. You could just hold right here and kill them. At the do it again. And you've got Cypher ult. You know nobody's flank. It's so good. What is this? <laughs> Hello gamers, look at your elo. Now look at mine. Now back to your elo. Now back to mine. Sadly, it isn't mine. But if you stop autopiloting outdated strategies and start getting free VOD review coaching, it could look like it's mine. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on bind. With the strats your strats could be like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's the Valorant gift card from Wuhujin. For your successful follow-up thought, look again. The gift card is now an ego vandal. Anything is possible when you get your Valorant tips from a talking banana and not TikTok. I'm on a gaming chair. <laughs>Jet? Wait, I can barely hear the VOD. Yo, Daniel Chow, fix your audio balance. You can hear it fine. Really? The comms are so quiet. Yeah, I think Nudo Buddha's is weird. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Interesting you chose to swap the ghost for that fight. I'm not complaining. What's going on, A? What happened to A? No, it's not. Gecko's in there. Yeah. Okay, so you kill this guy. And we're here. And your homies are leaving A. What's going on, A? What happened to I'm down for you to peek. You take your shots at Gecko. But I think right now, you got to dash. You got to dash. This is unfortunately a big mistake on our end. The longer you let yourself cook here, the longer you're going to give them to like coordinate and attack you and your teammates are leaving. You definitely should have dashed. Okay, 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 okay. If your rank icon is below the red one, I think we should avoid using this gun on round two. I'm not gonna lie. Even if you are immortal, like the sheriff on round two is pretty troll. If you're especially on attack, what are we trying? What are we trying to do here? I think I think this is really suboptimal. It's looking like we're all look at our buy. Bucky? Yeah, like, th th this is just a recipe for disaster. Like, statistically speaking, are you giving this buy better win chances than Spectre Spectre with the rest of these guns? Marshall? No, the, the Spectre. Just get a Spectre. Like, the only person who might be able to pistol this round would be Cypher or Omen because they might want to play alone and lurk. Fade doing it makes no sense. This is so weird. Yeah, and like, you just died. No? Like, if they're ropes, you just died. Like, did you not just die? Am I crazy? If they're ropes right now, you literally just threw this round. This is, like, so needlessly risky. They could even be, like, here right now. Two gen. One more. Two more. The fuck is this? It's 150. I hate that round. That round is the type of round I want to see when you have worse economy than them. Not the other way around. You don't do crazy dash with shotgun rope shit 
when you have economic advantage. Still have him. Give your Vandal to your Spectre player. One, uh, one lit. I smoke. I fuck. Yeah, I think heating canteen there is not bad. I actually think he just kind of did it too slow. Like right here, you're too slow to peek out of the smoke. And then here, of course, we rush our shots. This is like a scenario where pushing spawn's not bad. You're on economic disadvantage. You're down a man. This is pretty good. Unfortunately, you, you get laid out for it. I think I'm. I think we're seeing a pattern though, and I think you're about to throw every single round. Ropes. Yeah. What the fuck. Two ropes. Oh God. Yeah, it's good if you do it on occasion. If you do this shit every round, you're you're garbage at the game though. Like, what is this? I like this. I'll see too. I'll see too. Oh my, like what the fuck, bro? Okay, now I don't like this. So you had a pretty easy option here. You're low HP. You know that they're all gen canteen. Nobody's pushing you behind here. Nobody's flanking this way, so they can't come under pass. It's really lit. In these scenarios, you want to stay on this side of arcade and hold this type of cross. Let me boot up a custom to show you. If you held gen from arcade in any scenario, like any HP here, you're kind of trolling because your teammates can't join the fight. Like if you're fighting here and the enemy fights you from right here, what the hell are your teammates doing? They don't see that. They can't chill in that fight. Same idea here. If you fight the canteen guy, this is a bit better for your team. But if the canteen guy swings way out, they can sometimes isolate. It's way more broken to hold like here because so this is where you'd see them canteen. Picture yourself as this guy. You come out, you peek. OK, you come out here from sight. Maybe man, you're coming out this way. You're looking town out. And this is like right where they get shot. This line. Draw a line in the ground. Gem players coming out. They clear here. They clear sight. They look arcade. They don't see you. And they're coming outside looking B main. Usually this way. And you already shot them in the back. You're in this angle. It's really hard for somebody coming out gen or canteen to peek this. Because look what I'm exposed to. Everything. It's really hard for me to peek you here. Because of the line that I have to be on to look at you is insanely exposed to all of sight. This type of pattern exists on other maps. So let's pretend you've got the bomb down on Haven C and you know nobody's rotating this way. Well, then you can play this angle here for the CT cross and they can never clear you because if they stand here and look at you, then they're fully exposed to backsight and just die for free. So these types of angles are everywhere. They just usually require some form of information to play safely. So right here, you can see the problem with this angle is that you just die to this guy and you die to this lurker. But those guys don't exist right now because we got all the info. We have full info thanks to our um, cypher ult right here. We know that they just canteen and gen. Yeah, and instead you go for this peak and you see straight up duel right here. Nobody on your team can fight this guy with you. This is trash. If it were 3v5 and you were over 80 HP, this is lit. This is lit. But it is 4v2, and you are 49 HP. This is garbage. So we're 51 HP. We've got tower control. we got full sight. we got, like, everything. The dudes are about to plant. Now it's 5v3. We have a trip arcade. I think we're getting a bit too excited. You don't have main? Well, look where you're looking right now. You're literally dead to main. Yo, one CT, one CT, one gen. I think if they peek here, they peek here. And one gen. One gen, I need help over. I need help over here. Lit 60. Yeah, this is just not good. So it's really tough for Cypher to play off you here because he has to stand here to swing off of you. And as you said, you don't have main control. So the dude would have to stand here to swing off of you. But look. See the problem with standing here? Fully exposed to main, which as you've rightfully identified, you don't have control of. So this guy feels pressured to come over here. But now he's taking the fight before you. You're here and you've got to swing in. Which is tough. It's way better if we'd stayed like tower. Uh, we've got this trip for arcade you can play off of. And if they're flooding out Jen and they're not coming arcade, if they are coming arcade, you play this angle on the rope and you, you kill them. 
if they're not coming arcade, you could just like come behind them as they're coming outside and you come this way and it's going to maximize the value of your low HP. You're too willing to just run out of fight when you have 50 HP and a huge numbers advantage. But the way you play, I feel like you coin flip a lot of your games based off whether or not your teammates like a, can like consistently convert those. And there's no reason to do that. We can win those 100% of the time. One canteen. One lit gen, there's two gen, one canteen. Dude, the number of dry 50s you take is insane. It's absolutely insane. One sec. Is 10s play jet on this map at all? We're going to consider a dry 50 to be a fight where 10s has no help. Like these guys are far away, just like this. And he willingly just swings without info. So right here, notice round starts. Do we swing B main? Of course not. It's just spot. There will be main. Off angle advantage. Harbor, Harbor pushing me, pushing me. Wait, what? The harbor's being dumb. Here we're swinging with the whole team. Oh, yeah. we going through. This is definitely a drive 50. It's one. 26. That's one. We're going to count. He okay, jump spotted that corner. No, that's not a drive 50. That's with tons of team util. This is not either. I'm going for Ecos. Our homie Breach is with us. Dude got laid out though. Now Reyna's with us. You see the trade coming out immediately? 36. It's like the moment I tell you to look for it, you realize how insanely good he is at the game, right? He's not just taking fights and winning them. You see the difference see. now? See, you're saying, oh, Tens pushes CT. But when he does, he's got the homies. You don't have shit right now. So if Tens were pushing this, which he might because your dash is primed, he's taking like two shots and dashing. But you're like committing to a crouch spray. Oh, man. Yeah, you just dry fought this. Bait and bait. Or your team's stunned. One more drop. One CT, one drop. I'm wrapping. What the fuck? Like, why? <laughs> Don't you lose the round if your whole team dies here? Bro's running a marathon. Dude, he's actually rapping. Get the 5v2. Shouldn't it be okay since it's a 5v2? No. A 5v2 is completely winning in that if you stay there somehow playing with the team in whatever way, you can ensure the team wins the round if you don't screw up, okay? You have agency. You'll win the round if you play it right. If you go for a round the world here, you can lose the round if your teammates screw up. Why would you leave that option open? Because you, you can't trust your teammates to convert that when you can play with them and for sure convert it. Like the control is in your hands. Two, two, uh, heaven. Two, one heaven, one heaven. Okay. You're just too willing to take these fights. You, like, I love that you're down to take these fights, but I want you to take these fights after you try to get these guys to take them with you. And then when they're dumb and go this way, then you take them anyways. You feel? But instead, you're just taking the fight and you're not even trying to take it with your team. So, okay, you fight Breach. Two, two, you know there's one two, flank. Uh, they heaven. broke trip. Talk. Talk. Your buddies will come over. Two hit, one heaven, one heaven. Towers, towers, towers. Lit, lit, lit. Bro, Amy, you went to fight towers, Breach towers, there? Towers, towers. It's just you don't know where he is when you open this door right here. The bro could be right here. If you knew Breach was right here and you open the door, then this is not bad. I give you an advantage because yes, you've got your two, he's one. So you've got greater than 50% odds and you should absolutely fight. But you don't know where Breach is. You just know Breach dropped somewhere on the sand. Got Gotta breach. love that from the gecko. There's no way you heat canteen with an op, right? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 
No, no, no. You just watched your whole team die and the bomb is planted. I thought I had time. Is it planted for me? No, it's not planted for you. Why would it be planted for you? Who the hell plants the bomb on Fracture and is like, yeah, I'm going to plant it open to gen. No, they'll die doing that, bro. What do you mean? Is it planted for me? Yeah, one sec. I'm going to plant out here exposed to gen and canteen. Bro, you have an op. You literally have an op. You could just hold right here and kill them at the it again and you've got cypher ult you know nobody's flank it's so good what is this <laughs> at the very least at the very least if you're married to rapping can you rap this way like if you're super duper sure that rapping is the best could you just go like this way and kill that fade and then you know crunch tower and play your op here like, there's no way you're looking at your mini map right now because you should be because there's no enemies near you you see your three teammates getting crunched on site in a 4v3 and you go yeah i got time nah let's see defense let's see it never mind, never mind. go 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 Push it. Come on, come on. this is good but I think it's okay. That's you see why it's good? We've got our fucking best friend. We have our best friend. Mandible Matt is with us. Two already out arcade and one rotated. Three arcade, three arcade. One, one already play. rotated, bro. One team. What could be CT? They planted. Wait, 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 wait. So right here. Okay, 55. Two already out arcade and one rotated. Two arcade, one rotated. Fabulous. Yes. That is indeed correct. And then you learn the last one's a main. You don't know what to do there. Literally, you chill. You hold this guy because those two are stuck arcade. Your homies are pushing them with util. Like you hear the raise nade. So this guy is going to try and come back and help his arcade guys get out. So you just need to contain. You need to contain them. Like if they're walking out this way, you'll be able to shoot them in the back. You've got them contained one, one arcade. Rotated, bro. One what could be CT? This is really troll. They're 50. Three. like really aggressive dash out. Bro, ask for some util. <laughs> you not do it fast enough? No, he's getting, he's moving with Marshall too much. If you want to peek out here, you need some form of util, like a raise nade, a fade eye, an omen flash. These are all good. Like literally every teammate except Cypher can help us with this. It'd be nice if we asked one of them to help. But if none of them are helping and you want to peek B main with Marshall, then you just have to come out and you've got to like post. You got to take your one shot. Uh, the Marshall's a powerful gun when it comes to like holding an angle. It's not powerful at peeking. It's similar to like the op. Okay, we lose the round. There's no world you're about to do the same peek with an op, right? Bro, bro, you are just missing one piece of the puzzle. It's like, I'm not going to draw actual puzzle pieces because I'm not an artist. Okay, but here's you right now. The last piece of the puzzle is called initiator utility. You literally have to play exactly the same. Like exactly what you're doing right now is stupidly broken. If you have initiator utility comboing with it, the moment you have an initiator throwing an ability that supports what you're doing, you're going to top frag every game and hard carry. The problem is when you don't have this piece of the puzzle, you can't play this way. You have to play differently when you don't have initiator utility supporting you. Like if you don't have supportive utility, you have to play differently. You can't just drive peak with op here. You literally would be like cooking so hard if you just had if you just had somebody throwing a flash or throwing a recon, like fade throwing an eye onto this box, raise nading. So you have to keep in mind what initiators you have. So in the 10s VOD, we had breach. And breach is the most common on this map. But for example, with your tower push, it's suddenly good if you do it, but you have this guy throw that stun first. Now your play is good. Now, not doing it every round, of course. You, you got to mix it up. But the moment you add like one ability 
from your teammate to support you doing this thing, you're like cooking hard. I've got, I, we, we're, we've seen enough of the VODs. So when my teammates are opping, I will frequently, you can watch my VODs. Now, of course, you're not in my elo, not yet. Let's say you're opping A main. What I generally do pre-round, uh, I usually play B side tower, is if uh, A is our weak side, because my op is A, I will calm. Yo, Jet, I'm going to throw a knife for A main. Wait till it tags. If it tags none, you can rotate off. And then I'll throw this knife. Unbreakable lands in that corner. And if they're A main, my op will now know. Because sometimes when the enemy team knows that you're opping, they play a little slow because they have to figure out where the op is. They might even jump spot. They might flash, stun, or whatever. We need to collect information. And that's the initiator's job. The initiator has to figure out where the enemy is, how they're trying to hit. The initiator has abilities designed to collect information. So all you need to do is understand that as the opper, they want to figure out where you are and they don't want to dry peek you. And so you should see your fade tower and you should ask her to dog this because this guy's not a radiant player and he's not going to dog for you necessarily without being asked to. I mean, he ended up doing it, but it's unpredictable. So you just need to ask them to collect that information for you because you want your op to make contact. Instead, you just made an assumption when we didn't have to make one, which is great. It's, uh, it's great that you're willing to make assumptions like that. It's not great that you're willing to make them when you don't need to make them. Does that make sense? If you were alone on A and your whole squad was B, this, this could be fine, honestly, pushing up fast or rotating fast at 135 with no noise. That could be fine. Although, I mean, with 4B, you might not want to rotate. But the point is, there's no reason to make an assumption right now because we have a data collector who can figure it out. This should be pretty easy. You're going to get a lot of ELO. Bro is about to cook chat. This is the easiest type of student to rank up. Overly aggressive is always better than overly passive. Avoid contesting unknown space when you have equal or advantaged numbers. You are totally allowed to contest it with the help of team utility slash numbers advantage it's that simple when you have equal numbers i don't want to see you dry peaking space i want to see you taking space that makes sense to take so you can't just take a main when you've got no info about where the enemy team is at all you need to wait for your info collectors to collect some infos does that make sense Kale you just need to be more vocal about using your teammates to dltr be far more vocal about using teammates utility to take space and you will gain 300 rr minimum don't don't change your pacing you don't want to change your pacing you want to try and increase your level of coordination i don't think the around the world needs its own note because that's contesting unknown space with advantage numbers without the help of a teammate if the bro wanted to call a teammate to around the world with him i mean i guess there's no world a teammate's gonna follow that though